Well, Razorback fans, they always say the biggest improvement is from week one to week two. So what are some of the things that we have to see as Razorback fans to feel good against Kent State? We'll talk about it on today's Locked On Razorbacks podcast. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 103.7 The Buzz and 103.7 thebuzzcom Today's episode is brought to you by Bird Dogs. Go to birddogs.com slash lockedoncollege or enter in promo code lockedoncollege for a free water bottle with any purchase. You won't want to take off your bird dogs. We promise you that. Hope everybody's having a wonderful Wednesday as we are getting closer and closer to week two. Like, I think it's just thrown me off, like, in a good way that you have uh, a game already on Saturday, but it feels like it's a Monday or a Tuesday and it's like a day behind. It's a short work week, but still, it's great. It's great to be able to, you know, have a shorter week and get closer to game day and everything. And I know that people are excited to be up there in Fayetteville. I wish I could be up there in Fayetteville. I am going to be missing my second Fayetteville game since 1997, second or third, I have a wedding to go to. Yep. So I will be there. So hopefully everybody else can have some fun and cheer on the hogs for me while I'm gone. Uh, but yeah, uh, I know a lot of people are going to be making the trip and they're excited about Kent State to see, you know, what this team can build upon. And I feel like that's always uh, an interesting thing of when you talk about the sample size of what you're able to see, no matter what it is when it comes to sports especially, but it's like when you have one game and that's it. Like, it's one thing if you were making predictions throughout fall camp, you know, like, oh, well, this is what I think. This is what should. This is what could. This is what may. But when you get one game, it's still like not to the point to where you feel confident or 100% confident in what the team's going to do the rest of the season. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it gives you more of an idea, but we have seen so many times where you got game one looks a certain way, but game two looks completely different. It happens pretty often. So it's about building up that sample size to really know exactly what this team is going to be or how good they're actually going to be. And right now for Arkansas, they're sitting at 1-0. and we, we talked about it yesterday on the podcast, what things we really liked and things that really look good and uh, some things that need to be worked on or be changed or be considered or whatever maybe. Like they got to have something a little bit more than just that. And for me, going up against Kent State, I believe Arkansas, first off, should win this game handedly. And I know it sounds like, you're like, oh, man, you're playing with fire. You shouldn't say those things. I believe that's the case. Arkansas, I'll say it. Arkansas should win this game handedly. Kent State is not a great football team, and if their first game is any indication, they went up against UCF, Gus Malzahn's UCF, and lost 56-6. 56-6. to to and you're wondering, okay, was it just one thing that they really did good against uh, a really just uh, or that UCF did really good against Kent State? Was that the problem? Well, how about this? Uh, UCF threw for 334 yards and they rushed for 389. That's like 700 yards offense, over 700 yards offense. So, yeah, you should beat this team pretty handedly. And then UCF was able to have a good defensive matchup because they only ran or they passed for 145 yards. Kent State did. 145 yards. He went 12 of 32. Did not throw a touchdown or they threw a pick. And then they had 95 rushing yards on 36 carries, which is an average of 2.6 yards a pop. Yeah. Uh, Arkansas should smoke Kent State. They need to go out there and they be, need to beat them. So here's what I'm going to look at it from the perspective of, okay, so what do we want to see? Well, first off and foremost, I want to see the same exact thing that I saw against Western Carolina this past Saturday, where Arkansas, from the jump, from the get-go, come out, set the tone, out of there. That's what I want. Because uh, uh, UCF is kind of an interesting thing. They scored 56 points. They scored 14 points each quarter. Each quarter of the game, they scored two touchdowns. Arkansas, you know, it doesn't matter about how point totals or anything, but I want to see this game be completely and totally in hand even before halftime. Like, you could tell against Western Carolina that even though they had some points on the board and even though it was far from over, 
you just saw it. You're like, yeah, this this ain't it. <laughs> These guys can't match up with Arkansas. This is going to be a quick one. The game is over. I want to see that once again. Don't get comfortable. Do not get comfortable. Don't sit back and be like, I want to know. Did you see what we did with Western Carolina? That was great. Easy. And then go up against Kent State and, and mess around. I want to see you go out and dominate. I want to see you go out and establish yourself. And I want to see you like just have it. If there were you like when they're hoping that there was a wish, uh, a mercy rule, like them wishing that there was a mercy rule. That's what I want to see from the get go from Arkansas against UCF or against not UCF. That'd be cool. If they were playing UCF against Kent State. But getting a little bit more specific, I would also really like to see, just like we all would, the rushing attack really establish itself because 389 yards is what Kent State gave up against UCF. And 90 yards of that was from John Reese Pumley, the quarterback. 100 yards from Johnny Richardson. Uh, 84 yards from R.J. Harvey. Like, it was pretty, it wasn't just like one player dominating. Like, you had, only one guy had 100 yards. They had a really good share of, of the rushing attack. And with Arkansas's plethora of running backs and whatnot, I think that this would be a great opportunity to, for them to bounce back from last week, which they didn't do a good job of running the ball. And really get more physical and up front. I think Brady Latham's going to be back for this game, which is great. Because uh, more offensive linemen, especially in the starting role that you can have back, the better. But also there's been some rumors circulating, circulating around about possible injuries to some running backs. And I'm not going to name them. I'm not going to get into it. Because at the point of time in this recording of this podcast, I don't know anything. I, I, I understand there's a rumor out there. But I'm not going to say anything or like you know, put myself out there of saying like, oh yeah, this is what I think is going to happen. It could, it could not. I don't know. But until something comes out or some sort of report, I'm going to assume that all the running backs are going to be ready to play. But even if they're not, even if they're not ready to play, even if there's this one or two even dealing with injury, it shouldn't matter. In fact, I would be totally fine if of the five running backs that you have that are really dudes that are getting the playing time. You're talking about Rocket Sanders, A.J. Green, Rashad Dabinian, Dominique Johnson, and Isaiah Augusta. You got those five dudes. Of those five, if two of them have to be held out, whether it's an injury or whether it's just for you know, building up and healing, great. Hold those two out and let the other three take care of business because it shouldn't matter. It shouldn't matter if they don't play or not. So I want to see that back in action. I want to see with now getting Brady Latham back and having those running backs, you getting physical with Kent State. Because Kent State, again, they can't stop anybody. They can't stop anybody. They can't score on anybody. If UCF did it that to them, Arkansas should do something similar. Now, does that mean if Arkansas only wins 49 to 13, then that means UCF is a better team and it was a bad performance by Arkansas? No, although some will try to take it that way. But I want to see that I want to see the rushing attack to a point to where you're getting whatever you want. You're opening up those holes, you're feasting. You got two guys with over 100 yards. I want to see it. And if KJ throws it, that's fine too. Uh, but you know, if, if I feel like no matter what you do offensively, you should be able to beat this team. So I want to see that. And then also, from the defensive side of the ball, I, I went back and I watched a little bit of the game again and just looked at some highlights and, and some, some things. I, I, I'm not trying to sit here and act like I'm a coach because I am not. I am far from a coach. I am far from anybody that knows all about, oh, well, here's the schemes and here's, here's what they're doing. Here's, they're going through the A-gap. You know, I'm like, I'm not one of those people. But I did notice that there wasn't a whole lot of like blitz packages being sent from Arkansas. There wasn't a whole lot of crazy maneuvers for the defensive line up front where they're you know, doing some stunts and doing some drive. Like, there wasn't a whole lot of those things. I thought that it was just pretty basic, a pretty basic defense. And the basic defense was able to do what they did against Western Carolina, which is a great sign. So I, I don't, I don't want to see anything that could be on film, like, you know, always vanilla by design crap that always gets thrown around. I'm okay with seeing that. Because, again, Arkansas should be able to run their basic offense and their basic defense and still win this game pretty handedly. I want to see everyone healthy, for sure. Like, get out of there healthy. And like I said before, if there are players that are banged up and they could really benefit from sitting out a week, please do. Because I, think, I feel like this game should be a good one no matter what. Or one, a good one for Arkansas no matter what. You, you got to get everybody ready for BYU. 
And then you got to get right. Like LSU is going to be the big one because I still think Arkansas is going to beat BYU no matter what. Like they'll be, they should be three and zero heading into the LSU game. And you got to make sure everyone's healthy for that one too. So let's see those things play out. Let's see, let's see the guys get it going and get healthy. And from there, we'll we'll see how it actually plays out. But I don't know. I'm just I'm I'm hyped up and excited, but I'm also like nervous a little bit too. I don't know why. It's 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 a Wednesday. Come on, John. Like you're you're fine. You're better than this. Uh, but one thing that will never make me nervous, though, is wearing my bird dogs. Like I, I've told you many times before, these bird dogs are incredible. If you have yet to purchase them, if you have yet to try them on, I don't know what you're doing. You are missing out. You are missing out tremendously because they make you look good and they feel good. And they have different designs for all different occasions. And you'll be almost shocked about when you feel it. You're like, this feels weird. I don't know about this. And then when you put them on, you're like, what am I wearing? Like, it, what, what type of like greatness did I just put on my body? Like when you, you know, the old adage is like, hey, I put on my pants one leg at a time too. No, when you put on your bird dogs, you become greater than life. You become, it's your best day whenever you have your bird dogs on. So you got to try it out. If, if you haven't done it, be sure to do so. Just go to birddogs.com slash locked on college. Simple as that. Birddogs.com slash locked on college. Or you can enter in promo code locked on college at checkout for a free bird dogs water bottle with your order. That's birddogs.com slash locked on college for a free water bottle at checkout. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. I promise you that. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so continuing on with the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Now, I know this is a Razorbacks podcast, and you want to hear about the Razorbacks stuff and the Razor. Of course, yeah, I will always do that. And I know that tomorrow... Uh, on the podcast, too, by the way, we'll have uh, a very special guest, Tay Lockett, the 2026 commit. He's going to join us on the podcast tomorrow. So we'll have some fun with him and talking with him about uh, all of the commitment and all that stuff. But I just wanted to you know, throw that out there. Shameless plug. Uh, but, you know, when it comes to reacting to the games and, and everything going on, I feel like there's also some interest in what happened inside the conference itself in the SEC. Because... I look at it as each and every week you can look at Arkansas and where they stack up or how they look, the power rankings, if you will, of the SEC. And I'm going to tell you to you like this, folks. The SEC had a bad week, bad weekend overall. Uh, team, there's a lot of teams that won, but man, it was rough. So you had Utah beat Florida, and Florida looks like a trash team right now. Right now. Again, things can change, but right now. They look like trash. Uh, so we knew that on last Thursday. I mean, Missouri beat South Dakota 35-10. Okay. Like Georgia beat UT Martin. It's Georgia 48-7. Alabama 56-7 over uh, Middle Tennessee State. Really the only team that played a Power 5 team, even though they're not a good Power 5 team, but looked good, was Tennessee 49-13. They got the victory there. Ole Miss 73-7 over Mercer. <laughs> A&M. 52-10 over New Mexico, Kentucky, 44-14 over Ball State, Auburn, 59-14 over UMass, Mississippi State, 48-7 over Southeast Louisiana, Vanderbilt beat Alabama, AM 47-13. Like, all those games were about what you expect, you know? Like, blowout city against directional opponents. But North Carolina beat South Carolina, 31-14, beating my two touchdowns. And I know Arkansas doesn't play South Carolina, but South Carolina was supposed to be this team that everyone was pumping up and being like, this could be the year. And I was still suspect on it because I'm going to be honest. I don't really like Shane Beamer. I tried to in the beginning because I, I like the kind of the energy that he brought. But I have never seen a dude that is so like, like when, when he's like dancing around, you know, he's doing, you know, the, the Carlton with all of his players and stuff on TikTok, you know, whatever that nonsense is that he's doing. And it's fine because like, you know, people do weird stuff all the time. Like, I love Eric Musselman. Eric Musselman does that stuff. But, you know, hey, he's our guy. So you love it. But I didn't mind that. But what you can't have with it is like when he loses against North Carolina and he's coming out and the first thing he mentions is like blaming like the chain gang on something. Oh, they're, you know, we're trying to get an onside kick going, but I guess they decided to have a hot dog. I'm like, dude, I think of all the things that you need to talk about with your team and the problems, it needs to be the fact you only scored 17 points. You didn't score a touchdown in the second half. So like, I, I just, not, I'm not a fan of his. And I didn't buy into it at all. But, it, you know, they beat Tennessee last year and Clemson to end the season. But Clemson looks like, man. What happens when you have Chad Morris on your staff, you idiots? We could have told you that one. Losing to Duke. But 
I just don't trust it. So South Carolina is, you know, they're not off to a great start. North Carolina is a good team. I won't take anything away from them, but everyone was talking about South Carolina being this like team that could take a next step forward, but certainly didn't look like that in the first game. And how about LSU? Yo. Ike. They lost to Florida State 45-24. Now, Florida State is a good team. Really good team. Top 10 team, worthy of it. Deserving of it. Good team. But the second half and what Florida State did to LSU, they, they went in there and they took their soul, hit their soul. And when we talk about needing more body of work to really get an idea of what a team is. But LSU, when I watched that game, they gave up. I felt like they gave up in the second half. Florida State scored 31 points in the second half, 21 in the fourth, and just smoked them. And it felt like that, uh, really felt like Brian Kelly threw his team under the bus for a little bit. So I thought that was weird. But man, that was, I, I was shocked by that. But it, for, LSU did not look like a team that was ready. They looked like a team that was feeling themselves too much. And when they got hit in the mouth, they crumbled. They folded. That's not a good sign for them. They got Mississippi State on the road in two weeks, or a week from this Saturday, I guess. So we'll see how that, you know, how they really bounce back. But if they don't show some huge improvement, I'm going to start thinking, man, Arkansas might. Nope, nope, not going to do it. We got games to play beforehand. We can't get ahead of ourselves. So, uh, yeah, Florida State uh, put it to LSU. This really wasn't a good thing. So overall, though, like where Arkansas stands after week one, I think most people probably have them at the middle of the pack. That's probably where I'll have them, too. You know, I, I probably have them in that, in that mix of, because obviously, the, you know, if we're talking about the teams that are way ahead of them, which, you know, Arkansas is definitely not, oh, power rankings, number one team. Nothing like that. But I do believe that Arkansas is the only teams, I'll, I'll do this. I'll do the teams that I feel for sure confident that is ahead of Arkansas at this point in time in the SEC after one week, because that's all we got. So that's what I'm basing it on after one week. Alabama and Georgia, of course, are ahead of them. I'd say Tennessee's ahead of them. Um, I'd say it's like the Ole Miss A and M thing. I think all those teams are kind of even with Arkansas at this point and Auburn. Like they're all kind of even right now. So I don't really know if I can like put Arkansas like ahead of all of them, but I don't know if I'm going to put them below them either. So I think Arkansas is in the ballpark range of five to seven, somewhere in there, where they stack up in the SEC. But they still should feel pretty good about what what they're doing right now, and just got to have more games, but. SEC's got improved. They look like doo-doo over the weekend. Uh, folks, get ready for the NFL season with the incredible offers of FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers can get $5 when you bet $5. You get $200 back and bonus bets guaranteed. Plus, all customers who bet $5 will get $100 off NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. So now is the best time to join FanDuel. The app is easy to use, and you can bet on everything from spreads to player props and to so much more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season with an offer you won't want to miss. FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of the NFL. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so final segment here on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Um, I wanted to uh, just kind of, this is like, you know, nothing really like big time as far as, you know, any developments in the game itself or in the week itself. But I did think it was a really cool deal. And people were wondering about how Arkansas and the U of A and uh, everybody was going to be honoring some of the fallen Razorbacks that uh, have happened here recently, like Alex Collins, Ryan Mallett, and Chris Smith. Uh, and so I, I kept wondering, like, we knew that there was going to be something. I, and first off, I can't even imagine how difficult it is to try and appease and try to honor people like this or a player that was iconic in the right way or in the best way. Like, that's a tough thing to do. But when you're talking about three players, three players, all very iconic players, all very recent players, that, and you're trying to do it to make, make sure you pay all the tribute that you possibly can to those players that's got to be a tough thing and hunter your check on twitter announced what some of the things would be uh for this year and i think i i really like the idea so essentially what they're going to do 
is that uh, beginning Saturday and throughout the season, uh, they're going to be paying tribute to Alex Collins, who's number three, and Ryan Mount, who's number 15, with their initials painted at the three and 15 yard lines of the home sideline on Frank Royals field. I like that. I like that. Um, it's not going to be on the field. It's going to be kind of on the sidelines, you know, but it's going to be the three, uh, three yard line, the 15, and they're going to have their initials there. So for AC and RM. So I, I love that. And I think that's great. And then for Chris Smith, they're also going to be having Chris Smith's family joining as honorary captains for the game against Auburn. So they're going to have his family there too, to, to honor them. And, uh, I think that that's, I think that that's awesome too. So kudos to Hunter year check, kudos to the university of Arkansas. I, Cause again, I can't imagine how, like, you know, how difficult that must be. And for anybody that's out there, and I know it's always about social media and it's about people who just want to be mad and complain and everything. <sighs> just stuff like this. Don't, don't try to make it about you. Don't try to make it about anybody else. Don't say, Oh, you didn't do enough. Like, or you didn't do this, that, or the other, like just, just respect it and respect for what it is because you know that the U of A and you know that the, the 100 year check they've been in contact with p- representatives and family members and all that of these players. And they, of course, would run it by them and talk to them about it. And if they're okay with it, you should be okay with it. But just remember that, okay? That's all I'm asking. Just remember that. But can't wait to see them honored uh, throughout this football season because they definitely deserve all that. Appreciate everybody listening in the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter, Buzz John Neighbors, for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have, and we will keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you then.